No, overall it was an exception. You got quarter 27% as you can see. All regions going upgraded the guidance for the full year, 40% growth on ecom. So you know the you know the world is slowly you know returning to normality, and we are seeing a drag on the close down in Europe and some of the supply chain issues. But overall, if you look upon it, a very positive you know challenge to deal with in the context of 27% growth. So growth is coming. We'll continue to grow, and we expect a very strong year for the company. But the, the market has been fascinated with your direct-to-consumer model and the new strategy you've been rolling out. But what we saw as lockdowns were lifted, people just queuing around the block to go into sporting goods um, uh, brand companies, in, including yours. How is that altering the e-commerce picture at this point and, and what you're seeing in terms of those online sales? So we continue to see very strong online sales with above 40%. But what you are seeing is you're seeing people longing to get out of the apartments, going to the stores, experience sport again. And as you can see, stores are sh slowly opening up across the board. You're going to see the European Championship starting in four weeks' time with participation in the stadium. So I think you're just seeing people want to get out. But that doesn't change the strategic long-term direction that e-com and D2C will be the main driver for our company. Casper, clearly um, the economic climate is not the problem here, but occasionally the politics seem to be getting in the way. Just give us an updated view on where we are in the situation with regard to the Chinese consumer. So we grew more than 150% for the first quarter. We expect a very strong growth for the overall year. So we're still very confident that you know, we'll continue to build our position in China, which is the single largest market for us. So overall, we, we expect a very strong year, despite some of the tensions you're seeing on the global political scene. So overall, very confident on China. How do you continue to negotiate this um, social media pushback you keep getting when it comes to the sourcing of materials and cotton from uh, uh, Xinjiang? Uh, obviously an area where now there are great concerns about the treatment of Uyghurs. If you look upon, this is of course a sensitive topic and we're doing whatever we can to make sure that human rights are protected. That has been so for 20 years for Adidas. And of course there is sentiment around it, but overall sport is a you know industry that people relate to, sp you know, sports stars moving, living a healthy life and that of course helps us. And that's also what we see resonating not only in China but across the globe. Uh, and, and yet, Casper, sport can be inspirational. It can it, it inspire people in all kinds of ways as well. Does Adidas need to do something that I know you don't want to do uh, and make a stronger stand on this issue? No, I think we need to make sure that we do the right thing in the long term, and that's what we've been trying to do, and, and you, know, you know, operating with that environment. And I think the most important thing right now is to get people out doing sport again, get them out of the apartments, and living a healthy life after 12 months of lockdown, which I think is probably one of the biggest social issues that the world is dealing with. And that is why we're seeing people are longing to go out and do sport and being together and having a social environment. And that's why sport is so ideally focused for growth in the future.